live on YouTube as well, clicking red buttons all around. Red buttons, live, live, live. What's going on everybody? Andrew Wall here, and I'm joined by Andrew Perrin, AKA Ashroll. And today we are talking all about how you can find success beyond YouTube. And the thumbnail, as you guys saw, says, get off YouTube now. That's not just clickbait. It, there is a real story to be told here, and there are real insights that my social media guru, Andrew Perrin, is gonna be dropping on us today. Some mind-bending stuff. Let me just tease a little bit of it, and we're gonna get straight into it. Things like Reddit video. Are you taking that seriously right now? How many views per month is Reddit video getting? Uh, potentially one billion. One, bi one billion. One billion views per month. One billion views per month. Think about that for a second. Like, do you want one billion views per month? Yes. Yes. Do you want a piece of that pie? Yeah, obviously we all want a piece of that, especially if you're creators on YouTube. So we're going to talk about that today. Yes, we are. And it's growing by 38% since the beginning of the year. And also certain social media platforms um, are pay to grow, like all of them. And we're going to share which one isn't today. Isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah, we've got so we've got a lot of good stuff to talk about uh, outside of YouTube, and we'll bring that into the conversation as well. Obviously, we know a lot of you guys are creators on YouTube, and this isn't necessarily about abandoning your strategy there. It's about diversifying off of there and finding success elsewhere that maybe will help aid your success even on YouTube. So um, that's right. I'm excited to talk about all of it. <laughs> Me too. And you know, YouTube. Let's go ahead and talk about the foundational reason why we're talking about getting off of YouTube because this is really, really important. Uh, and really quick, if people are not already familiar with you, Andrew Perrin, can you give them the 30 second rundown of uh, what you do for a living and why we should listen to you in terms of social media? Yeah, uh, so I'm Andrew Perrin, uh, AKA Astral is kind of an online um, name tag I use. Uh, I do gaming content there as well, but primarily I am a social media consultant and a digital marketing consultant. So um, I've got seven years of experience in executing hundreds of different brands on social media from US domestic brands, uh, Canadian brands to international brands, Germany, Japan, uh, Arabic brands, um, lots of different social media accounts, every different social media platform you can think of. I've operated at some point with some account. Uh, and it's led me to learn a lot of things. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've learned a lot of tr hard truths. I've found a lot of things that work and a lot of things that don't. Uh, and I want to share them with all you guys. So yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Andrew Parent is my go-to guy for social media platforms. Anytime I want to know anything about Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, et cetera, uh, I go to him. So let's get into it. So why are we telling people you need to get off of YouTube now? Obviously this isn't abandon YouTube, but this is diversify off of YouTube. What is the, what, what reason would we say that? Isn't YouTube the best and isn't everything fantastic? And isn't it always going to work out forever in a perfect way on YouTube? <laughs> Uh, so I, I made this analogy like a little bit earlier, but for me, um, when I look at YouTube, it's like trying to climb to the top of the mountain on the steepest face of it. And when there's a path on the other side with YouTube, you're fighting with the algorithm and you're competing and the most competitive video platform in existence. And instead of always kind of pushing and being hyper competitive there, you instead look at paths around that and go to places where there is more organic traction. There's more organic video views to be had. There's additional types of uh, monetization or revenue streams to be thought about other than just making money off of ad revenue from YouTube. And if you diversify out to these different areas, they can actually help you know, bring you back to YouTube and be able to not rely on it so much, but still have a successful strategy there because it's just a part uh, a wider business strategy. And so it's more of casting like a wide net uh, to catch different revenue and additional opportunity than just hyper-focused on one single platform. That makes sense. And you and I have done these sort of strategies as we kind of grew TGN into the number one gaming network out there. And I remember in the early days of TGN, we were up against competitors like Machinima, and we were up against competitors that were spending way more money on marketing, way more money on content, way more money on events, and they were doubling down on these platforms and dropping millions and millions and millions more than we were 
to try to grow their brands and it made it incredibly difficult to compete with them on YouTube, for example. And like, uh, I'll show it on screen right now. Like TGN right now, we have 1.3 million subscribers. Machinima back in the day, we were looking at them as a competitor. They have 12 million subscribers. Now we're like, how could we possibly ever overcome this competitor on YouTube who has so many more subscribers than us? The competition was greater than ever. And so one thing that we did as a part of our strategy is we we saw our competitors doubling down on one platform. We're like, great, we're gonna do a lot of different things on a lot of different platforms. We're gonna go to Twitter, we're gonna go to Facebook, we're gonna open forums, we're gonna do all of these initiatives, we're gonna do esports, we're gonna go Twitch, and we're gonna do all of these things that they are not doing because why ram your head up against a uh, big, big competitors on a platform when they have more resources than you potentially, and this is just an example from the past, they have more resources than you, maybe they have greater expertise than you, maybe, you know, no matter how much effort you put in, you can't possibly overcome them where they are king. Well, why are you going to go up against the Goliath on a platform where you can just go somewhere else and be king of a different platform? That strategy has worked for you and I for years and years and years, and it still works mm -hmm. today. In fact, I would say it's it's even easier to diversify into multiple platforms today than it ever was in the past because of technology like Restream and because of social media management tools and what have you that can make it easier. Is that fair to say? Yeah, in fact, let's go into a first example here where it's becoming a lot easier and it's a perfect transition. Um, Instagram. So Instagram is a platform that you know is bought out by Facebook. They're melding the two together uh, and really all the platforms are, are becoming this. Uh, they're, become, they're melding together, they're getting the same features that all the other platforms have, and they're all gonna be the same in five years from now. However, Instagram right. is one of the only platforms left uh, that, has, that still has organic reach. Like you can make content and post it there, and that's all you have to do, and you'll get likes, you'll get followers, and it'll, just, it'll reach users organically. You can't do that on Twitter. You so can't you do can... that on Facebook, and it's really, <laughs> right. really hard to do that on YouTube. You have to you have to work really hard to to get that on YouTube. But with Instagram, you can spend one to two minutes making a quick little video, and you're getting followers, you're getting likes. Like, and to add on to it, because of this melding of platforms, let's say you make an Instagram story, uh, you can just automatically share it to Facebook stories. So you're hitting two platforms for the price of one. And it takes far less time to do content on platforms off of YouTube. You know, when you make a video for YouTube, you got to put a lot of time into the editing bay. You got to really keep the quality there because there's a standard with YouTube. When you get outside of the realm of YouTube, quality really doesn't matter so much anymore. Like content right. matters. Content is king outside on Hello, every other platform. Twitch. And as long as your content is good, the, you're providing the value ads that AYU well, always talk about, the, the four different types. Um, as long as you're providing those types and your content, the quality can actually be poor. That's pretty standard for social media platforms actually. But as long as it's got those values, you're going to be gaining off of it. And maybe you can right. improve quality over time. So it's kind of a really scrappy way to diverse out get your content out there, get exposure to your content, uh, get followers based on that. And I mean, it's a lot less time involved uh, in general to do so. So let's reemphasize what you just said, and I'm gonna pull it up. So what you're telling me is that on Instagram, you can just post content and just get followers? Now that sounds yeah, so, really, really simple, but you that's that doesn't that is not what happens on Twitter. That is not what happens on no. Facebook either. They're pay to grow and they're pay to win platforms. On Instagram, you can literally just post content, use basic best practices that we'll talk about in future streams, I'm sure, using certain hashtags, having a certain level of quality, and you can just get followers and you can grow organically. This is a simple fact that a lot of people ignore, and a lot of people are still writing off Instagram as an opportunity to be a companion or a transition platform or a way to diversify their content uh, beyond this platform. And I'm just pulling up a couple examples here. Like, remember uh, Brent Ruiz, uh, one of our friends? I'm pulling up his account about cars. He just posts pictures that he takes of cars in California. Dude is getting 800 to 1,000 likes per post right now. Just posting content on Instagram, no advertising, etc. What other social media platform can you literally just 
post content and get followers. I know that sounds so simple, but it's just, this is the only one. It's actually even better than that. Even if you don't post content, let's say you just go on and engage with other people's content, you'll still get followers. So it's right. not even, it, the growth is insane in that if you apply a traditional, you know, uh, and I've talked about this like in the last stream, uh, engage more than you broadcast. If you apply that mentality to Instagram, the the results just compound. Water compound. is in. Oops, sorry. I was so if you video. send yeah. out, uh, you know, if you send out a piece of content and then you start engaging with the people that you know engage with that content, you're going to start getting. It starts to increase kind of in an exponential way in terms of followers, likes, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And the more that you do that, and the more time invested in this platform, you're going to get more per minute spent on Instagram than almost any other platform that you invest in your time into right now. And if you guys are thinking in a business savvy way, time is money and the most valuable resource you have is your time. Right, now this is really important because uh, Perrin and I, we recommend to all creators, if you're looking to drive traffic to your YouTube channel, it's very important to clarify here, we're not recommending Instagram to drive traffic to your YouTube channel. We're recommending Instagram if you wanna, tr if you wanna diversify off YouTube and grow an off YouTube audience and potentially diversify your revenue off of YouTube and grow your online business off of YouTube. Twitter, still the best platform out there other than Reddit to drive traffic from a social media platform to YouTube. And Reddit, we're gonna talk about that in a moment because they're now pushing their own video initiatives. Sure, it drives traffic to YouTube as well, but that's also gonna start declining now that they have their own video strategy and their own video advertising strategy. So speaking of video opportunities off YouTube and Instagram, uh, Rurikon, uh, a friend of ours uh, and full-time content creator is asking in chat, IGTV doesn't feel organic at all. So can you share your thoughts on Instagram core versus IGTV right now and the opportunities that you are seeing or not on IGTV, their video product they rolled out earlier this year? Yeah, so I mean, and my this is just based off my personal experience with IGTV and my personal thoughts are um, IGTV was kind of a disappointment in that it relies already on what you've built on Instagram and feeds off of that. So if you are looking to uh, tackle Instagram for organic growth, IGTV is really more of it's more of like a medium term part of your strategy there. Like after you've kind of done the normal Instagram part, you right. work on stories well, you post content well, and you engage, 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 engage. And you've done that for quite a while and your account has reached kind of like a medium health status. Then IGTV starts to be, be a little bit more interesting. But for, I, th and I, I think I speak for uh, quite a bit of social media professionals on IGTV. It was a bit of a disappointment in that it, it doesn't have the organic growth that we have come to love from Instagram. Um, but we also have to look at, you know, Instagram and Facebook, like I said, they've melded together. How much longer is this organic reach going to last? Uh, Instagram has been around since 2010. It's 2018 now. Right. We like, I'm expecting it to die at some point. I mean, all organic growth on all these platforms, the trend has shown that eventually it goes to die. So right. if you're not getting in on it now, you're missing a really big potential opportunity that might not come back around for a while. Like we might not see you know, organic growth in different platforms appear again for quite some time. That makes sense. Um, so when there's organic growth, take advantage of it, go get those followers, go get those views, go get that audience, go build your business because it will go away eventually. You and I have been in this business for a long time doing this seven years full time. And that's the trend that's happening on every single platform. So Instagram is the final frontier of social media right now of relevant platforms that you can go get organic growth from without paying. In our previous live stream, that where we talked about social strategy on Twitter and on YouTube, on Facebook in particular, our recommendation is paying a minimum of $15 US dollars per month to operate, just to operate a Twitter and Facebook account on a basic level as a creator, because that's what's required now. Eventually, I, I would put money on it. I'm gonna guarantee, and we're both, I think, saying this, we're guaranteeing that Instagram will yeah. be in the same boat. You will not be able to just post content and just grow like magic on Instagram 
in the future. And now that I think one of the co-founders of Instagram left the company, I think that is another sign that this melding of Instagram and Facebook means that there's going to be a melding of business objectives, business practices, and business philosophies and algorithms, which means that that whole pay to win side and pay to grow side of Facebook is going to creep in very quickly into Instagram. So you guys, I, I'd say you probably got a year left maybe before Instagram dries up and it's shell out cash or get no views and no traction. So this is your opportunity to get audience right now. So if you guys aren't acting on this immediately, then you're just leaving, you're basically leaving audience on the table and why would you do that? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, um, and I want to get to Reddit, but one last uh, part of Instagram. Um, can you pull up Alex Costa's uh, IG again? Sure. Um, he's a really great example. So we're talking about diversifying off of YouTube, and, and what, what we haven't really hit on too much is, uh, well, how are you making money then? Because obviously it's important that you start making money um, for your time invested into this into this stuff. But the idea is to not think about uh, the the rev think about monetization and think about revenue in different ways. Instagram is not monetized via ad revenue, but um, someone like Alex Costa has used Instagram and makes lots of money off of it. If you look at almost every single one of his posts, it's he's endorsing a brand. Um, so yeah, he head is and shoulders, doing uh, what's Walmart. called influencer marketing. Yep. And it, if, if you guys are creators, and you're not looking at the growth and the future of uh, influencer marketing, like I guarantee you every marketer right now, we're looking at influencer marketing um, because it's basically the best form of marketing ever. It's word of mouth. Like you get an influencer who loves a product, genuinely endorses it, and his followers love all of that, and they get a genuine endorsement for like a product. You don't get a better advertisement. Like, so Alex Costa is a great example of how to monetize off of YouTube, make money in a very genuine way. Like obviously Alex Costa loves these products, loves these, this clothing line, like loves everything he's endorsing. And so it's a very good relationship for creator, for, uh, for the advertiser or for, for the business, uh, and for all of the followers, for, for the people consuming his content. They like Alex Costa. They love the way he looks in this clothing. Yep. They, they aspire to that, and it gives them some ideas on products that they can maybe buy. Um, so it's that I, hope, I wish and hope for that future of marketing because it's so much better than just ads targeted at you that you don't care about. It's, it's products given to you in a way by somebody that you trust, and it's products given to you in a way that you will is you're gonna like them. Like you're more yeah. genuine, you're more likely to like those products. And so um, this is a whole different type of monetization thing that you could rely on outside of YouTube. And yeah, it could also help you supplement your YouTube strategy too if you're doing this on the side. It could. And one thing that you guys need to keep in mind with things like Instagram and getting sponsorships here. Off of doing, like, let's say on Instagram, you're getting decent traction, you're getting hundreds of likes. If you're getting hundreds of likes per post, you can start getting sponsorships on your content for hundreds of dollars per post. If you're getting thousands of likes per post, you can be getting thousands of dollars per post to endorse brands. Think about that revenue you're making on Twitch, on Mixer, on YouTube right now. Imagine doing one professional photograph, like, what if you had like a pair of sunglasses on or you had a DX racer chair or you had a mouse in the picture or you had some monster energy drinks and you could just make $500 with one social media post, $1,000 with one social media post. This happens regularly and this is not magic. This is not something that's uncommon. The Every company is now investing into influencer marketing and Instagram is their primary platform to want to invest in for these one-off sponsorships that will require as little of your time as humanly possible. So you could be making just from a few Instagram posts more than you would make in three to six months on your entire YouTube channel and you grinding out video after video after video on the treadmill. And so that's something that you guys need to take very seriously. And a lot of these brands and a lot of these companies will overpay. They will pay more money than you are worth in terms of your reach because they are struggling to reach young people and they are desperately trying to reach young people. And the advertising money that they have and that they've been spending on TV all these years, they've been spending on print ads all these years, that they've been spending on billboards and magazines and all of these old school media methods, even traditional advertising through YouTube and Facebook, they cannot reach these audiences. And so they're willing to overpay 
too much money, more than you're worth to get you to endorse their product or to show their product or to talk about their product on Instagram. It's such a huge financial opportunity. This is the golden age of influencer marketing where if you have just a little bit of influence on something like Instagram, a platform like Instagram, advertisers will pay you more than a little bit of money. They'll pay you a lot of money. So do not ignore that opportunity. Your value, like if you're a stock right now, Right now, influencers, um, your the the value of your stock is drastically inflated right now in 2018. Come 2020, when media companies and advertisers have a better digital strategy and they have more people like me and Andrew Perrin working for them, then sure, they may not overvalue you. But in the meantime, the old people and the people that don't understand you and the people that cannot reach young audiences, they're going to overvalue you, and it's your time to take advantage of that. You're not taking advantage of those companies, you're not doing something immoral, you're just realizing your financial value as an influencer. You know what I'm Nailed saying? <laughs> <laughs> that was a great summary. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, so let's, um, last words on influencer marketing. It's something, so we're talking about going to places where things are growing, going to places where the things are organic reach. Influencer marketing is growing. You want to get in on that as, as a creator, uh, as a savvy self-start business person. That being said, let's move to Reddit because Reddit yeah. is the second one. And this is, this actually surprised me. I always saw Reddit, you know, they call Reddit the front page of the internet. And I love that, but it's user base has generally not grown uh, for quite some time. Um, but they implemented native video and that has boomed beyond expectations. So they it's did like insane, this whole kind of dude. site, like rechange, which was scary, whether what, if that was going to kill the platform or not. But in that change, they thought, hey, let's start doing what every other social media or platform is doing and let's do native video and let's let's focus on our video. And if you guys are like me and you what and you consume a ton of Reddit per day, um, you'll know how much you, you already know how, how the possibility of that, right? Normally it's linking out to YouTube or to other videos, but when they get it native on there, this changes this is gonna change the platform completely. Um, and they've also personalized it a bit more so that each user on there isn't so kind of like generic and anonymous. Um, you have a little bit more, a little bit more behind your profile, um, a little bit more of an identity that you can create. Yep. But native video here, this is one spot where I haven't seen native video blow up with this kind of views uh, in quite a while outside of like yep. Instagram, really. Um, it's, this is, this is the first I've seen it since, since Instagram essentially. So what does this mean then? So obviously Reddit got a big, and everybody needs to listen because Reddit right now, and we've talked about this before, is the primary plat is the best platform to get views off of YouTube to YouTube. And I've showed you examples of how Perrin and I and our team have promoted TGN content and got that content over a million views on YouTube because of Reddit. But let's just think about Reddit right now. They got investments into their business, they've improved their look, they've implemented video, they now have group chat on Reddit. So what are they trying to do? Well, obviously those investors invested money because they want Reddit to make more money. How are they going to make more money? Rolling out new product lines. Why do they have group chat right now? Because they're planning on monetizing group chat. That's why. Why do they have video right now? Because they're planning on monetizing video. Okay, well, in order for them to monetize video, what's going to happen once video reaches a certain critical mass? They are going to stop prioritizing video on other platforms. They're going to stop prioritizing things like GIFs and linking off of Reddit so that they can emphasize yep. their own in-house video platform. And this is going to happen on Reddit soon. So this is another cautionary tale this is another example of right now is the golden age of Reddit and maybe will only last for another year where you can post YouTube content on Reddit and potentially blow up your content and get a million views on your content on YouTube if you do it right like we've done before, Perrin. But that's going to go away because Reddit's now getting a billion views a month through video and did, did you see the statistic? One million uploads every single month on the platform. So yeah, people jumped on this. Like they, 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 and I actually kind of missed it, uh, to my own fault. Uh, you know, when they, when they changed the features around, um, all the users who are on the platform, they ate up, they ate this up. They saw the opportunity, the native video. Yes. On Reddit. Hell yes. So, uh, the people jumped on it, but we're going to see, and you're hitting the nail here. 
we're going to see the same formula over. I've seen it over and over and over again. Platform introduces video. Platform starts focusing on video, realizes it can't, it, it doesn't want to embed other platform video from other platforms because they're competitors now. So they start uh, like either disincentivizing that or they just totally cut out the, the feature altogether and they're going to completely focus on native. Uh, yep. So I imagine that actually will be longer than a year, I think, but it depends on how, how fast this, this booms. But, um, so now is the time to get on Reddit, uh, be, one to, to share your YouTube video content. If you're, if you're doing that now, I mean, you're not going to get to do that much longer. So think, start to think about how you can transition a strategy to have native video on Reddit that you can, that you can gain value of for getting views there. Uh, and really yeah. don't think of value as like, how can I bring value back to my YouTube channel? Think of how can I get value of having a really good Reddit account? Uh, uh, and yes, because they're, they're, that's the whole purpose of them kind of restructuring their site is so that you can build an account that has value. Yep. And if you have an account that has high karma, high value, high video views, that's going to be valuable for, again, uh, the whole influencer marketer area. And who knows what else? We don't even know now. Like it could open up lots of different possibilities, but it, it at least opens up influencer marketing. Oh, it sure uh, does. It at least, uh, you know, it, it, and um, I, probably more things that I can't even think of right now. This is just the beginning, friends. Reddit is, I, here, here comes some bold predictions. Are you guys ready for this? Reddit is going, to potential, is going to enter and try to be a Facebook and YouTube and Twitch competitor. That's exactly what it's going to do. Because Reddit right now has the most robust communities around these niches gaming niches, football, like sports niches, food niches, political niches right now that are unbelievably engaged, that are already, that are moderated by non-Reddit, uh, non-Reddit employees. So it costs them zero dollars. And these are extremely engaged communities that can be monetized. And how are they going to monetize those communities? By getting as much content on the platform as possible that is native to that platform. What is the best way to get native content on your platform? Get creators on there releasing their content on your platform. So you better believe that people that invest in Reddit, I've been preaching Reddit forever. I've got 20,000 karma on Reddit right now and I'm gonna continue to grow my account because when Reddit goes creator centric, this is my Nostradamus impression or uh, prediction. When it goes creator centric, when you can make your own channel page on Reddit, when you can make your own full profile on Reddit, when you can start releasing your own content to your own channel on Reddit, you better believe people that have tons of karma, you better believe people that have built up their credibility in certain subreddits and niches are going to blow the fuck up so are you gonna invest today why do you think reddit took tens of millions y'all and is building a video product on their platform are they just doing that because it's fun no they're doing it because they want to make hundreds of millions and billions of dollars off of video that's why they did it and how and they have to get creators everybody's looking at the youtube model what platform blew up and became the number one video platform out there youtube why creators so they, they realize, what's the ecosystem that works? Creators, advertisers, platform. <laughs> so obviously Reddit and Facebook and everybody else is gonna do the exact same strategy. So creators, are you gonna invest in Reddit? Why is Reddit one of the best platforms to drive traffic to your videos back to YouTube? Because people on Reddit want to watch videos, that's why. Consider this for a second. <laughs> so Andrew, on your, on your stream, you talk a lot about algorithms and how, how, to, how to understand you know, that platform's algorithm and to net, circumnavigate it in a successful way. Reddit has, in my opinion, the best algorithm of all, and it's a yes. user-based algorithm. That's right. Reddit doesn't control the content the way that it wants to control it. The community controls the content the way that the community wants to control it. The best content gets filtered to the top. The worst content gets filtered, like pushed down to the bottom. That is a core feature of Reddit that has existed from the beginning. They're not going to change that. Nope. Otherwise, they would ruin their entire platform because that's the whole point of it. So you've got an algorithm on a platform, on a video platform that is user centric and supported by communities and users it's the first one that creators are going to have so think about that for a second you don't have to circumnavigate the, the algorithm the way that the company had designed it all you have to do is be a good member of a community 
be liked by that community, make content that that community will upvote and you're gravy. You're good. You're going, that's the only criteria that you need there. The best content will rise to the top. So if you're making good content there, it's going to, it's going to thrive. It's going to get you views. It's going to get your name, your, your brand exposure. Yep. It has the potential to be one of the most, like one of the one, you know, creator slash video platform that could actually have a big impact on the other ones. And that's a kind of a bold statement to say, because YouTube has been king of the, the top for a while. I'm not saying it's going to dethrone YouTube, no. but it's going to have benefits in a much better genuine organic way that's just healthy for its user base that's right guys i'm showing it on screen right now take a look so if you're on giphy cat they have this like nasty looking embed right here notice like there's this giant giphy cat bar on the bottom and it's kind of this gross looking post that has like this pixelated stuff and it looks okay but it's not that great hold on have we ever seen a social platform do this before where they make embedded uploads from other platforms look crappier so that their <laughs> uploads look better let's scroll down parent and see what happened as we scroll down oh my god look at this gorgeous minimalistic better video encoding on oh that's the reddit native player that's why this yep. upload is now going full screen that's why this upload loaded faster that's why this upload looks so good because it's reddit's player so Reddit is going to continue to make things like Giphy Cats look like garbage. It's going to make things that like YouTube videos look like garbage. And it's going to make its own player load faster, look better, and emphasize their own in-house Reddit player. Why? Draw on that dollar sign right there. Money is why. <laughs> that's why yep. they're going to do it. And that's why they're already doing it. You guys see the difference already? Giphy Cat has been king on, on everything. GIFs have been king. Guess what? These GIFs look like doo-doo now. Look at this. You've got this giant freaking line here. I don't know, Perrin, you can watch the stream. you got this giant player line. You've got all these controls. Yes, yeah. you got the Giphy bar here. It's kind of pixely. Look, you've got like bars on the side. Like it just looks like crap, man. I can't wait to see how they butcher YouTube videos. They're going like, to just butcher. Awful. They're butchering you know they're it. They're going to do it too. <laughs> like what are they going to do next? Like just randomly have it like glitch out and crap. Um, I don't think that they're going to have their algorithm eliminate posts like that. I just think that the posts are just not going to be as awesome to look at. And it's going to be inconvenient to embed them. Whereas look at that gorgeous Reddit post. Oh my God, that gorgeous Reddit video. All you see is just this little clean volume thing in the corner. Do you want to turn the volume on? Anyways. Oh, there it is. Oh, it was so easy. Turn it off. What a beautiful, seamless experience. Cha-ching, 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 Reddit. Money, 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 money. You better believe it. And what platform have we seen in the past, Perrin, that did this and ended up getting billions and billions of views per month on their own video platform? Can you recall any other platforms that did that? Uh, let me think here. Um, yeah, Facebook did this. Well, both Twitter and Facebook did this. Um, Twitter kind of backed out on it. Facebook's the, the worst example. If you embed a YouTube video on a Facebook, it looked so bad. They put the video in like a third of the square box and then it's just a really ugly white image for the rest of it. So you don't even get like a full square video screen. Yeah. You got like a third of a video on the screen and it just looked so ugly, so unclickable. And you could tell they designed it to be so unclickable and so ugly. And it worked because they backed it up in the algorithm and said, oh, is there a YouTube link in this post? zero organic reach just zero yeah let's no traction let's go ahead whatsoever. and post this youtube video on on facebook right now i'm gonna go ahead and do it <laughs> just to like only me just so we can look at how nerd oh hold on that's the way a youtube video looks on here okay so hold on what if we do uh how is there any other way to post it to make it look better no there isn't sometimes you can get a thumbnail sometimes you can get that box but generally speaking you cannot that's what happens when you post a YouTube video. It used to be gorgeous. You used to get that like big video player and it used to be embedded and it looks nice. And then yeah. now over time, this is what, see this right here on Facebook? This is the way video posts is gonna look on Reddit in a couple years on other platforms. You're gonna see a link. End of story. <laughs>
So there's a comment here, and uh, I'd, I'd like to tackle it, actually. God the Good One is saying, uh, Andrew Wall read it right now, is too geeky right now to appeal to the mass user. I'd like to refute that a bit. Not that not then it's too geeky. I mean, that's, that's an opinion for sure, and I probably could agree with that one, actually. But this is a mentality that, and this is kind of the core of this whole point of the stream. The mentality is, do you go where the mass users are? Do you go to the biggest platform where everyone's competing, and do you go work really hard there to get noticed? Yeah. Or do you go to something that's more niche, a smaller yeah. platform with a more niche targeted audience where, you know, it's not so competitive, where maybe it can focus on your, maybe it focuses on kind of your, your subset, you know, like uh, a good example is new social media sites coming out that are smaller, but they're more hyper-focused. Medium.com, uh, uh, focused on writing uh, and for writers, obviously, a social media site kind of for writers. You know, if you're a writer, that site speaks to you it's more specific to your niche instead of trying to, to do that stuff on the biggest platform ever. Why not go to the smaller platform? That's a little bit more tailored to what you're doing. Pick up an audience there. Cause it's uh, grow a user base there. Cause it's going to be easier than competing on the mass platform. Stop trying to go to the biggest, most popular thing. You're not going to win versus the biggest, most popular guy. Nope. We've seen this time and time again, when you've got a juggernaut on the top, Nobody unseats the juggernaut until the juggernaut gets hit by a bus. Yep. So you're not going to win. So the only way you win is to go around, to be scrappy, to find the small spots, succeed there, grab the small audience, and build up from doing that strategy over time. And then you can get big. You can get big by diversifying, by going to the places where there's growth, by going to the smaller ones. So the other thing here is, uh, and the other line of thinking is, be on the lookout for new social media sites coming out. And yeah, there's tons of social media sites already. We're like social media is a thing for, you know, our generation. But if you're on the lookout for these new ones coming up that are more niche, you know, that, that are maybe a little bit more relevant or tailored to your interests, they maybe aren't going to unseat YouTube. They're probably not going to unseat Facebook, but they're going to grow users yep. in a way that those platforms are not growing. And even if it's a lot smaller, they're getting new users, which means that means, that means, more views for you. That means more exposure for you, more opportunity for you. That absolute 100%. And so I, I, one, one platform that we recommend regularly and one platform I'm using right now. So let me just share with you this mentality. I practice this mentality myself. So there are hundreds of people out there that give advice on how to grow on YouTube, Instagram, social media, and what have you. And why am I going to do the exact same strategy as all of them on YouTube right now of producing videos between three to 10 minutes long and trying to get top search results to give you guys advice on how to grow? Why would I do that? Why would I compete against hundreds of people and do the exact same strategy as all of them? Instead, I'm not investing my six to 16 hours per video to produce videos to try to get big views on YouTube. Instead, I'm live streaming to multiple platforms and I'm doing a completely different strategy and focusing on word of mouth and focusing on servicing my clients directly and doing a completely different strategy from them. And in a matter of just a few months, doing a different strategy than them, going to different platforms than them, including Quora. I have got, I've got so many clients now, I've gone from zero to thousands of dollars per month in consulting and coaching creators, small businesses, and clients. Zero to thousands of dollars per month in just a matter of four months. Why? A, I know what I'm talking about, but B, I did a strategy that was different than the competitors. I'm not trying to run into the biggest competitors on the platform and do the exact same strategy as them to reach potential clients and to service clients. I'm focusing on different things than them. I'm going to different platforms than them, and that's why I'm winning right now with my strategy. Guys, I'm not doing this as a brag. I'm telling you, I pre we practice the things that we preach. We've done this with businesses yeah. that we've managed and that we consult with. Why are you gonna try to build a better mousetrap and try to outdo the bigger competitors that have a bigger audience and more resources than you and are willing to spend way more time than you can and resources than you can per piece of content? Go somewhere else, do a unique strategy and freaking win. It works. We've been doing this for years, man. It works. It does. It works surprisingly well. Yeah. And there's even, there's even fun ways to, to do this. Like you can do like a competitor analysis, right? Go into your space, 
Look at the top person. Look at them as your main competitor. And, and they can be like the biggest, you know, gaming, a gaming person in your space or whatever. Right. Look at what they're doing. That's successful. Look at their strategy. Look at, look at, like, look at all of it. Look at their socials, look at their YouTube, look at how they do thumbnails, look at everything in the strategy. I guarantee you, if you analyze it, you will find a spot and somewhere that they're not doing something. Yep. And that is where you go. You go to the spot where they're not doing something super successful well, because every strategy has a, has a weakness to it. No matter who you yep. are, no matter how big you are, there is a, there is an open opportunity that they're missing out on because every brand, every human can only do so is only capable of so much. So there's always going to be that wiggle room. And that's kind of where you can build a strategy base around or at least can give you some ideas to start your own strategy. Say, Oh, they're, they're missing out, you know, on this certain area of the internet where there's all, there's a huge community for this specific, you know, yeah. type of product or something. And you could tackle that. And, uh, you know, Quora is a great example. No one ever thinks of Quora, you know, in terms of like building an audience yep. or, you know, acquiring followers, think outside of the box. Yep. And that's a great example of thinking way outside of the box. I thought um, and, way outside of the following... box. Are you, did you guys even I... know Quora exists? It's the platform where you can answer questions for random stuff. I hopped on Quora and with my phone, I just sat for a couple days in my bedroom, like at my like mom's house one day. I'm like, I'll just test Quora. I made a profile and I just answered a bunch of questions about YouTube, right? And I just copy pasted some stuff about how I helped grow a network and stuff like that on my profile. I'm showing it on the screen right now. After answering, I think like, I have 47 videos of me just recording answers into my phone. I got 31,000 views on this platform and I've got multiple paying clients who have come to me and are now paying me money to help them grow their social media strategy and their YouTube strategy from Quora. Now, why did I go to Quora? Because my competitors were not on Quora. So I win. This applies for all of you. Go, don't just make content that your competitors aren't making. Go to platforms where they are not, and you will win. If there's low competition or no competition, you instantly win. It's that simple. You instantly win. I instantly win on Quora because nobody else is there who has my level of expertise answering these questions. This is just an example. If you guys are making gaming content, fishing content, outdoors content, magic content, go release that content and bring your expertise on platforms where the competitors aren't there. You instantly become the king. Just like that, just by being there. Isn't that amazing? It's that simple. It's really surprising. You know, you wouldn't yeah. think that that's a possibility. And, and when you get stuck into kind of the YouTube space, you get inspired by the way that YouTubers and creators do things there. And you kind of like want to live, you kind of want to follow that path. But yep. really the true way of seeing the answer is going off that path, doing it differently. Um, and that's also kind of to tie it back to YouTube, YouTube a little bit. That's also the part of YouTube that makes, that makes it YouTube. Every person is unique. Every person is different. That's why it's called you tube because it's about you. <laughs> so if you, I know I get kind of cheesy with it, but if you are, don't follow the, the same path as somebody else, if you do a unique path, if you yep. think outside the box and you do something different, that's how you get noticed. Yep. That's how you get bigger on YouTube because you're doing something different than everybody else. So yes. really, if you apply the strategy of diversifying off of YouTube, really it kind of circumvent kind of comes all back home to you and it helps you with your YouTube strategy because you are doing something fundamentally different and that makes you unique and that makes you interesting. And people want to watch that. Beyond YouTube, friends. For those of you that are just tuning in, social media guru Andrew Perrin is right here. We're talking about how you sh can and should diversify off of YouTube. And I want to show you guys a quick example. And I'm just going to um, link it in chat right now. It's in the description of my YouTube stream, restream.io. I'm using it right now. But let me just show you how easy it is to diversify off of YouTube and win. Right now I'm streaming on Twitch, Periscope, Mixer, Facebook, and YouTube. But this platform, go to the platforms where your competitors are not. You'd be like, oh, there's no viewership there. Really? Have you tried it? What if you get 10 viewers from this, 100 viewers from this, 3 viewers from this, 4 viewers from this, 6 viewers from this? There's so many to try. Like, look there, at them all. It's free. Which ones can apply to you? Use Restream.io. Yeah. Stream to this, 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 this. It's the golden age of distribution. 
Why don't you become within your niche the king of all of these platforms your competitors are not on? Why don't, do you not want to be the king of these platforms? Seriously, do you not want to? Why would you not want to when you can just click a few buttons and go be king? Diversify off of YouTube. What I'm going to be doing this weekend is setting up more accounts beyond these major ones I'm doing. I'm going to start live streaming to live.edu, livehouse.in, and you'll be like, all these platforms are a joke. Hey, well, you don't know what you're talking about. Guess what? I'm going to get paying clients from these platforms. I guarantee it. And I'm going to tell you about it on upcoming live streams. And some of you guys watching live streams in the future, you will be the people I found using these platforms. This strategy works. Be where your competitors are not. I think we've run that horse into the ground. Let's move on yeah. to the next subject. All right. So I, so we're talking about diversifying off of the, all these different platforms. And there's a lot of platforms to do. And you're obviously busy editing and you still want to do your YouTube thing, right? How do you create content? in a lean way and not have to spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on all of these different platforms, making content, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So and I alluded to this a little bit earlier. The first thing is when you branch off of YouTube and you go to other uh, platforms uh, in general, like I said before, quality is a little bit less. And so you don't have to spend so much time on it right away. You can just produce content. But you also got to look at where you can produce lean content and you can produce it lean multiple times per day yeah. and look at the way that features have been integrated and be smart about how you use them. For example, let's go back to Instagram again, just for a sec. Do you, uh, want, to pull, you want me to I pull up that screenshot? A picture of, yeah, pull, pull up a screenshot of Instagram okay. stories. So Instagram stories are great because you can do video. It can also be image. It takes a couple minutes really to do a piece of content uh, and, and really even to make it look good with a lot of the features they have there, but you can do a story and you can share your story. And if you scroll down on that image, if you have your Facebook page linked to your Instagram account, you yeah. can automatically share that story to Facebook. So it goes to Facebook okay, too. Oh, with, wow. Look like, at that. So yeah. Two platforms. Auto sharing. Two, okay. Yeah. Two platforms with one piece of content that takes a couple of minutes to make. Where else do you get that value? Out like Restream is a good example, but like that takes a couple minutes and it will get views. It will get views on Facebook. It'll get views it'll for sure, get views on Instagram and it'll give you organic growth on Instagram. But why not post it for Facebook for free? So I love that feature. Uh, and, and that is one of the things where we're kind of talking about like the doomsday of the melding of Instagram and Facebook in terms of organic reach possibly dying. But there are pros to it and that the features meld together and you're hitting two platforms for the price of one. That's actually really exciting to me. I, I, I'm really excited to see kind of how that turns out um, and how you can kind of go back and forth on, on between both, um, especially if you've spent time investing in the Instagram. And, you know, obviously it's harder to grow on Facebook uh, without paying money. And being, let's say you had a good strategy on both. I mean, you're getting, you're doubling up the benefit for the price of one. So Again, your time is your most valuable asset. And if you're looking at attacking additional um, platforms in a way that you can hit, can I, can I hit two platforms at once? Yeah. Restream IO. Can I hit five platforms at once? Yeah. Okay. I'm taking that. Look, look for those opportunities where it's not just focusing on one platform, grinding it out, trying to be competitive, understanding the algorithm, spread your brand across multiple platforms with one, one press of a button. And that's, that's the type of thing that I think is going to become more prevalent with creators. And they're going to understand um, the value of it more and more and more. Yeah. Uh, because we're all looking for simplicity when there's a hundred different social media networks and, and platforms and stuff out there. How, how do we be able to get the value out of as many of them as we can for spending the least amount of time that we can. And, yep. and that's kind of the criteria that you that you want to be looking at. And, and a lot of people are going to, well, I, I want to address something really quick. And we have a question from one of my patrons that I want to address as well. Uh, M and J TV was asking about if somebody has taken your name on social media, how do you get that? Let's, let's address that here in a minute, but really quick. Um, a lot of people are going to write off Facebook or they're going to write off Instagram or they're going to write off Twitch mixer, all of these platforms I showed on restream. They're going to go, well, my audience isn't going to be there. Like I know that people that watch cooking videos aren't on Periscope. Or I know that 
people that watch my game I'm covering are not on gg.tv or I know that blah 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 audience is not on vapors, blah blah blah, etc. What do you say to people that feel like they already know what the result is of being on these other platforms and of releasing content on these other platforms before they try it? Like, what do you say to that person who's already basically defeated themselves before they've even tried releasing content there? Judging, you're judging a book by its cover, uh, and you don't know that for sure. You would be surprised at the type of audiences that are on different platforms. I'm surprised every single time I go, I'm like, wait, there, there's gaming, there's gaming viewers on this random platform. I, I, I would never have thought that. Unless you try it, you don't know, be, because users out there, there's, there's, the world is filled with millions of different, different types, like different types of users who like different types of platforms for different types of reasons. And maybe they're on there for a cooking video, but maybe they happen to like, you know, like love like World of Warcraft or something too. And you happen to hit them. You can't assess what every person in the world is interested in per platform. You're not that expert. I'm not that expert. And well, you're not that expert. So the only choice, the only way you can know for sure is to try. And unless you unless you try, I, I don't think you can you can judge a platform before you you've given it a shot. Um, be open. The general line of thinking is be open to opportunities on different platforms. If you're open to more opportunities, you're open to the possibility of more different types of followers and users. The more you're going to find, yep. and the more they're gonna people are gonna follow you because that mentality of being open to opportunity. It makes you open as a person, makes you likable as a person, and makes people want to watch you. It makes you interesting. It does. It does. And here's the other thing I would tell you guys. Thank you. That was I loved everything you just said. Here's the other thing I tell you, and I'm gonna be keep it 100 with you. If you're telling yourself, yeah, but I don't want to be on Periscope, or yeah, I don't want to be on Twitch, or yeah, I don't want to be on Billy Billy, or yeah, I don't want to be on Chew.TV. Guess what? All of your, com everybody you're competing with is saying the exact same thing. So if you take a moment to shift your thinking, then you are the one in 100 or one in 1000 person within your niche or within your area that has shifted your thinking and has decided I'm going to try something different. And when you're that one kind of uh, black sheep out of the crowd of a thousand white sheep that diverges from the crowd and does something different, guess what? You instantly win. So if you want to just go with the crowd and do everything that your competitor, exact same thing that all of your competitors are doing and be in the exact same spot that all of them are doing, that, that they're in, then go right ahead. Guess what? You're going to be going uphill at the greatest possible incline. You're going to be banging your head against the greatest possible challenge and you are going to take as long as possible, with as much time as possible, with as much resources as possible to reach your goals. Why are you going to do that? That's just straight up stupid. I'm being real with you guys. Don't be <laughs> stupid. Be smart and diversify and do things that your competitors are not doing. Diversify to Take more platforms. The yeah, the general, the yeah. general, like a lot of what we're boiling down to is just a, is a me mental perspective and approach to how you hit your content and how you are a creator. In general, you know, be different. Be a rebel. Uh, think outside the box. Um, be open to weird opportunities that initially might like not look very good or cool but feel it out check it out test it out see if it could be something that works yeah. that type of openness and that type that type uh, leads to more opportunity more opportunity leads to more success and yeah you're going to fail on some of these for sure i mean it, andrew you and i have failed on lots of our strategies on lots of different platforms sure many many times oh yeah Fail, failure is always great too because you learn from it and that's the reason you and i can talk to all of you guys today on stream is because we've learned a lot of stuff from, from those failures so we failed a bunch that's great the fact that we failed means that we know what works the more you fail the more you know what works it's that simple so if you're not afraid to fail you win if you are afraid to fail you ultimately fail so let's move on to the question from patron uh, M and J T V. I I sent it to you, Perrin, um, on Discord. Yeah. Do you mind reading that question from M and J T V? And uh, do you mind addressing that one? Because I think this is a question that a lot of creators out there are going to have about uh, having accounts with your names, something like that. Do you mind reading that one? Yeah. Okay. So uh, he's asking if there's some other random account that has your brand name as its handle. 
whether active or not, how do you get that handle from them? Mm-hmm. Um, and this is actually super relevant because I have been looking into this uh, myself personally. Um, there, there's a couple ways of going around this. Uh, if they are to some degree active, um, you can reach out to that person directly and ask them, you know, what it, would they be open to an acquisition of that uh, of that title mm-hmm. or of that account? Um, that will probably, if, if they want to hold on to it, I imagine will involve some sort of monetary transaction. Um, that's not the best route to go, but if it's someone active, that's maybe the only option you have. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's inactive uh, and has been for quite some time, there's there's uh, kind of a better, more secure route to do. Um, and so for, this works for um, Twitter and Instagram for sure. You can report an account um, for that is personating your brand. Uh, mm-hmm. And you can put information into that report that legitimizes your brand in the eyes of Twitter or Instagram. This would mean things like showing where your brand is getting traction. Like, do you have a big YouTube channel that is that exact you know, or, or, or that, that name that you're trying to acquire? Do, uh, and this is probably the most important one, do you have a website that uh, is your brand name? And even more powerful than that, do you have a trademark? I mean, because if you got a trademark, yeah. they're going to give it to you. So, uh, because the platform there's, there's, doesn't want to run into legal trouble and they just want exactly. to, they just want to resolve the situation and not get any lawyers involved because that's expensive. So in general, the strategy can be report these accounts, uh, that are impersonating as impersonating your brand. Um, or if you're using your, your personal name on your socials, it can be your personal identity, but you got to be ready to back it up with information that, that, truly genuinely justifies your claim to it and the more legal sound it is the better um but you know and it still doesn't necessarily guarantee success but um you know just the more the more ammo you have to show twitter and instagram that you are who you say you are you're legit you're a brand you're an identity you you're online and you're serious and you've got growth in other places and this account they have on on file is just inactive and and just no one's doing anything on it they'll easily swap it out um, so uh, there's another little trick that I've seen that I, I don't, I don't, I've never, I've never tested this, but, uh, and it, you can maybe try it is look at, um, look at Instagram every once in a while, they clear out, uh, inactive users or bots. Mm, and right. if you follow a big account, like Dwayne, the rock Johnson, you can kind of see this cause you'll, you'll see his like follower number drop at some point. Once you see that drop, send in this form because they're already going through an action. And I believe this is only Instagram that does this, but they're going through an action to clear out inactive users and bots. And if you get that request in at that time, you might have a higher chance. I've read that that's a thing. I've never tested it. So don't take my word here as gospel. Just, um, you know, if it, you can try it, it might increase your chances. Got it. Okay. So quick summary then of options to get an account, um, back or, or try to get uh, try to get something shut down or try to get an account with your brand name you can pay some you can contact somebody directly and pay them money and say let me have that account the other part is you can report someone that's impersonating you and the third one is if a platform's going through some sort of purge or if some variety and it may be available right after that purge then you can try to go ahead and claim the account at that moment um those are the three methods that you're going to recommend yeah, and I would say um, I would say don't don't hyper focus on those methods. I would say focus on what you can right now. Focus on legitimizing your brand in as many places as you can. Focus on you know if you're a creator and you're making money, focus on creating a business. Do a register a sole proprietorship. Um, name your business. Um, name your brand. Get a trademark. Get serious about your brand because because the more legitimate it is that it's going to be much easier to just claim those assets online. So in terms of taking steps, those are the steps that I would focus on first. Then once you've kind of worked on legitimizing that brand in different places, then you can kind of look at, you know, all right, maybe uh, let's start claiming uh, our brand a- on these different sites. Let's start, let's start taking uh, the usernames that we want. Let's start getting the brand that we want. 
Right, and if somebody is impersonating you on social media and they're in some way harassing you or doing something that violates uh, community guidelines or something like that, that's a much easier scenario where you can report them for harassment or bullying or whatever. And then in that case, you can get actions taken through that method as well. So absolutely, every platform's got very good reporting um, structure for that, and that's you know that's obviously a big red flag that they will look at and, and address uh, in a in a more hasty fashion. Uh, fashion. But just keep in mind, if you see somebody out there impersonating you, you're probably way more bothered by it than it actually has an impact on you, your brand or your business or what have you. So what Perrin just said a moment ago was really important. Focus on your game, focus on growing your brand, focus on growing your avenues, and don't focus too much on other people that are a distraction in this case, which probably aren't actually having any substantive impact on your business or on your brand or on what you're doing, the, ag the actual impact is that you're wasting your time and your energy focusing on it. It's actually having a big impact on you because you're letting it have a big impact on you because it's probably you're the only one that cares. That's another thing to keep in mind. A lot of people worried about like, I gotta protect my brand and what have you. Do you really though? Does it really matter? Not really. Probably doesn't really matter. Um, Focus on the things you have control over first. Uh, and, and as long as you're doing that and, and you know, cause obviously in life there's things out of your control that you're just not going to be able to assess. It's very realistic. You're not going to be able to claim all of your, the titles exactly you want on socials at some point, except that focus on what you can control. You're going to gain value and you're going to do much better for, for, for having done that. Got it. Ashroll, Andrew Perrin. Where can people follow you if they want to continue to ask more questions about social media? I'm pulling up your Twitter account on screen. I think uh, I, I would like to link your Twitter account. Uh, is it fair? Is it okay if people uh, just engage with you and ask you questions on Twitter about their social strategy and what have you? Are we good? Are they good to do that? Absolutely. Is that a good Twitter method? Twitter is a great spot to reach me. Um, you know, there's probably, I, I've always been more of a Twitter uh aficionado of, from the get-go of social media. So that's kind of my preferred. Um, my Instagram's blank and newer because I'm testing new strategies. You guys can go there too. It's the same title, CM underscore Ashral. Um, you know, it, like I said, I'm, I'm trying new strategies and I do this all the time. Uh, but if you guys want to engage with me, both of those places are really, really good places to go. Um, I also have a Facebook page. Don't have my claimed URL yet. Uh, but, um, if you want to check that out too, I can post a link to that as well. Uh, if I can find it. Got here. it. I just posted it in chat link to Twitter. Also at CM Ashrell handle. Ashrell is my Andrew Perrin is my go-to guy for social media strategy. So if you guys are ever asking me about your social strategy, a lot of the times I'm going back to him to talk about you <laughs> or to talk about those concepts at some point. So feel free to ask him questions directly. He is the man with socials and he can really get into the weeds with you if you're looking to figure out maybe some ideas or some ways that you can grow on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, all these different platforms. He is the man. Thank you so much for joining me, Andrew. I really appreciate it and uh yeah absolutely i would yeah. love for you to be back on on the show next week as well so we can continue to talk socials and uh i feel like we had some good stuff for everybody today yeah i hope uh you guys can let us know in the comments but i hope you enjoyed it too i hope it was insightful and i'm uh, happy to chat about more of this stuff um again on a future stream hopefully uh or uh, if you guys connect with me directly through um the twitter or uh, instagram or wherever but yeah thanks for having me on the show you got it and everybody Diversify to as many platforms as possible and do what your competitors are not willing to do and you will win. I and Andrew Perrin guarantee it. Adios amigos, have a great day and keep making incredible content and keep the hustle alive. See you guys.